Person has been doing the most there has been Phil clearly. Yeah, he's uh, he's helping with right. the uh, new. Uh, there's another one going out there now uh, for the Bath Conference. So, well, I guess it will be Bath Two. I don't know what to call it, or if it's going to be in Bath. So, yeah, it is at, at the university, I think. Right? Hello, people. Hello. Hello, Hello Philip. How you doing? All right. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, well, as far as the, the event goes, yeah, it's two days. It's well, basically the same as last year, as far as I understand. Uh, two days in Bath, then two days once again in the Quantock Hills, which is, uh, yeah, my favourite bit, really. Uh, I, I did like the uh, Quantock Hills. That was lovely. That's awesome. So you're, yeah. so you're, you're going to be joining us, are you, Neil? You're going to come over? Well, uh, I don't know how much it's going to cost yet. I don't, I mean, do you have Definitely the time, into it, though. exactly what days? Um, I ha- I'm going to have to open up a browser. If you give me a second, I'll just find it. Welcome to the March 24th edition of The Electric View. I'm Neil Thompson. Today we have Richard, Gene, Jim, Mark, Chris, Ramon, Buddy, Matt, and Robert. We are discussing the formations of Arc Discharge and its influence in writing and symbolism, particularly from China, what that writing says about their mindset, and what that mindset and knowledge tell us. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. I saw the conversation Gene and uh, Ramon were having. Right. Richard. Uh huh. So that was, I, I, I don't know exactly what you guys were talking about, though, so. Because uh, I only saw part of the conversation there, uh, or part of the, the, I saw the two pages that you emphasized to me there, Ramon. So I I don't remember even how it got started. I, I think we were just talking about arc, arc discharge. Um, but we're talking uh, about Warner Sizemore and Warner Sizemore, yeah, and diffusion and all the fun stuff well, about the Arthur uh, conspiracy. Hi, it's Rick. You guys, hear me? Hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. What's going on? Okay, not much. Not much. Well. Ray mentioned the Carolina Bays, and that set me off. So, <laughs> oh, okay, it was not just Ju- it was not just Gene and, and Ramon. You were there too. I was looking back and forth because I was looking for Ju- Julian. So, yeah, and Ray was mentioning about orientation, and I mentioned the fact that all of them, not all of them, but most of them, orientate to where to the Great Lakes. But there are quite a few that orientate to James Bay as well. So, I mean, there I is two large telling. areas there. What's that? Yeah, there's, that's very telling. Yeah, there's um, there's about four different vectors. I, if I find the image, I'll, I'll post it because I, it's in my paper. But they're and they're also of different ages too. And um, and the fact that none of them conform to really impact uh, geology very well at all. Um, and then the the fourth point is. When you have uh, two of them overlap, if you look into the LIDAR, and uh, if you have a hole in the previous one from the first crater, but yet you're forming a crater rim inside the hole, where does the material to form that rim perfectly come from? Uh, that's the that that one right there is kind of a death now because if you fire if you were to fire two cannonballs uh, right next to each other, you wouldn't form a perfect rim wall at the same level as the surface around the craters, uh, you would have a kind of, uh, I guess, descending triangular formation between the two, but it would definitely lean into the older crater because the newer crater would push material towards the, towards the older crater. So what you have is, uh, one strike happens and then another strike happens next to it and it, and it, uh, basically just re- reorientates the, the crater wall and then you end up with the same level. Uh, as you had before, which uh, you wouldn't have if you were firing a projectile, and and no, the, the we, lack of size of firing is a real issue. That flip, that 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 in, what was it called? Inverse strategic stratigraphic. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that word. <laughs> <laughs> Stratigraphy, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, that just we noticed that stratification along the uh, in the rib of the crater was basically thrown up. And it is an inverse to the cratering 
uh, on below, like on the surface, the original surface layer, and below. Well, if the ground was liquefied due to these massive electrical charges flowing through the Earth, like you know, the like during an earthquake, and these massive ice chunks re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, coming in at you know mock speeds and slamming into the ground, being carved out by the Birkeland currents that are carving out ice caps. It's it's plausible. I mean, it could it could have been, you know, cometary or rocky debris from, you know, uh, it, it being ejected from Venus or Mars or what have you. There, we know. There's five. no doubt that some the ground, but the original crater itself up in uh, Canada is also it, it's a bullseye crater. So the center of the crater is actually higher. Than it. So it shows much more um, uh, in alignment with the uh, electric arc discharge uh, crater formations than it does with... And I've heard impact, speculation impact. that uh, right. uh, something hit right around uh, the Green. middle of the Great Lakes on, on just on the west side of uh, Lake Michigan. Yeah, um, that's quite possible. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, impact sites i think you know we do have to rely a little bit on archaeology's dating i know a lot of people here aren't fans of standard methods of dating but we have to have something to, to start with and uh the best impact sites for the younger dryass are now greenland not not uh, the hudson bay area and michigan area uh sites so my contention that that the carolina bays they have too many things going against them being impact sites, namely the lack of a bow shock and lack of seismic fracturing, uh, and the different ages. You can see that from the LIDAR that the erosions are all totally different um, in, in their uh, aging. <laughs> so um, I think that we have a much better theory for how to explain those those events, and the, the Greenland impact seems to be pretty reliable as far as like an actual astrobleam. And I posted in the chat two two of the astrobleams, classic astrobleams here in Kentucky, and they are totally different from the third so-called astrobleam. The geologists wow. here they don't they didn't know what to make of of big sink. Are they called uh, astrobleams? Because I always called them astroblems. I guess uh, Is it? Uh, it could be an astroblem. I, I'm I'm can, probably making it a long e. I think but, it's a uh, bleem. Okay, the, I'll go with I'll go with Jean. But, she knows. But the, the big sink, <laughs> but just like the Carolina Bays, the big sink, what they had was a theory before of a karst formation, just like a Carolina Bays. And then somebody came along with a, what I would say is a better theory, which is that there was some kind of impact there. But the problem is that the big sink, once again, there's no, there's no seismic fracturing. There's no uh, bow shock. There's none of the features that we see at Jephthah Knob or Middlesboro Crater. So it's just like the problem with Behringer Crater, right? Behringer Crater is supposedly a really great impact site, but it has a lot of it has a lot of problems from our perspective because oh. it, it it's 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 got you know it's got several marks against it. But I wouldn't argue with a geologist over Behringer because that one's that one's like a literature defining crater for that community because it was so such a battle to even call it a crater before it was it was they they were sure it was a volcano. And Wait a second. Wait, I have something to add about Behringer Crater. I have put a piece of paper up against Behringer Crater, and it's square. It's not round. It's square with rounded yes, edges. Yeah, you're right. It and is actually, not it's a, an it's impact more, it's, crater. It, it's it's, it, it's it, They say they the scientists tell us today that if it's an impact crater, it's round, and they don't care what angle it comes in. It's going to make a round crater. Well, Behringer's square. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's, uh, if you look, it's octagonal. It, well, so yeah, but better. square with rounded corners. No, it's but that's actually kinda, square. But it is, it is very much uh, two, two. If it does have quote unquote four sides, you could say that four of them are thicker than the other four uh, beside them. But oh, yeah, yeah. So in that absolutely. in that sense, but yeah, still, absolutely. either way, it does not have the. Uh, I guess, as you said, the characteristics that we would normally associate right. with. A people dome is even hexagonal. We know, yes, we noticed that too. Yeah, that's and and that's one of our I I think our biggest strengths is that we can you know they they have a model it's sort of like uh, Newton's gravity right mm -hmm. it's most of the curve but not all of it and you know we're we're able to add more but um, you know as far as Zamora I mean Zamora theory became um, kind of obsolete as soon as the Greenland findings have come out but I still think that, that again a is so damning. That, 
that Greenland, I think that the Greenland site, because they found another crater too, uh, it's probably also a swarm. And those chunks, um, I think Rick is is probably on point that it's Venus and Mars. Of course, did we don't have... Did you just see that crater chain form? So. I did. I, 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 this is kind of the stuff I imagine happening when we were watch, looking at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, but the one well, down at the bottom... There's actually corner. a lot of craters in northern Quebec as well, so they right. may be they maybe have the timing off of those craters and they may have been about 13,000 years ago as well when we disconnected from Saturn and connected to the Earth and gained all this massive amount of energy and wiping out the, the last little bi bit of the dinosaurs and the 120 megafauna species that couldn't get underground. It seems... That crater chaining right there in that area was just... Seems to me that one of one of the biggest problems as humans is that we want to have very simple and linear answers. And just like the King Arthur tale, and just like uh, the mound people history here in the Ohio River Valley, there's probably a lot more going on in the way that they combine together in a very kind of uh, the randomness of life, kind of the chaotic stream of you know what the heck's happening, and every once in a while you pop up and you get kind of a bigger perspective. But by then, so many things have happened, and you know, I was just looking at the one of the myths of the Cherokee, and they very clearly com combined in the in the one myth because it had been orally handed down. They combined the Chinese the Chinese delegation with the arrival of the the Welsh into one myth. But the 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 evidence doesn't support that. It supports two different delegations um, or two different two different arrivals at two different very different times. And it, uh, I think that's going to be the problem with all of um, not just our electrogeology, but figuring out, you know, what happened between 10,800 BC and uh, basically the Venus myth, because there are several ages of cha of, of chaos. <laughs> they weren't one. Age. You say well, that. That's they weren't one age. It wasn't one age of chaos. It was several different, and and the and the destructions that that each one was most, you know, like the big destruction of each one seems, appears to be a different thing each time. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yes. and, and the, the myths are very clear about that. They're, they're um, not too ambiguous about it. Of course, the common thread being this, mis this mysterious power. Uh, there was a Chinese glyph I was analyzing yesterday that appeared to me because it had the, the rune for, or the, the Chinese glyph. For I like above. how you call it rune. No, well, I've been. It's similar, isn't it? it it's yeah, similar. they are. Really, it's similar. It had been above, and then it had two the two oblate spheres, one smaller and then one bigger, and then at the bottom it had a word that was really similar to gold. And my speculation, and then on the side it had the the one for man, which of course goes back to the to the great man, the squatter man, mm -hmm. and and then the lightning as well for the radical on the left. The so symbols of the planets was kind of what was another thing that I always thought that was related to the same thing you're talking about, those ideas yeah. of glyphs. But anyway, well, go on, and, sorry. And uh, so my speculation is that that, that uh, glyph was specifically talking about the transfer from heaven's authority from the father planet or star uh, to the sun star and the transformation of metal into Chinese metaphysics and uh, I think maybe the Welsh metaphysics as well. Uh, they believe that metal, if exposed to starlight or sunlight long enough, would hold. That's where gold came from, which isn't that far off from the physics. Yeah, or uh, the but, truth, yeah. <laughs> but that there was this power, and I've even found glyphs with actual pulses. You, there's a beam coming down, and then in the center of the beam, there is a bulge, and and it's and it's coming and arriving down. So there's there's this this idea of a downward. Can you link that paper again? It, I did put it in the chat. You mean you're talking about mine? Yeah. Or well, the the, the one that you were just referencing. That's all I want to. I was, I, I got hit, I got Matt to try to look for it there, and I don't know if we saw it there. Uh, yeah, I'll put my my. my oh, and then in. Phil linked uh, the Electric Universe UK stuff there. Right there. Yeah, that, uh, I'll, uh, so I'll put that in there. The um, link. It's on the um, sixth and the seventh is the uh, bath half, and then um. Uh, a rest day on the 8th, and then to the Quantox on the 9th and the 10th. But an interesting um, um, diversion is the fact that the bath, instead of being at like we were last year at the uh, Apex Hotel, we're actually having it in Bath University. Now that, I think, is a bit of a coup. 
um, having some rebel scientists going into the university and uh, using their facilities. So that's quite <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I, uh, I'd still like to go to some of those. I mean, those are those are like right? uh, mythic institutions, as it were. Like, I mean, to some people, it's like, oh yes, well, it's just uh, part of London, but to, to the colonies, I mean. <laughs> Some of these, bu- oh, some of these, bu- these buildings. The colony. Yeah, well, so it's like, it's like, it's like, this is, this building you're walking into is 800 years older than your country, you know, like, or something, yeah. you know, like that kind of, yeah, no, that has absolutely. to impact you, you know. Well, I would just, I'd just like to mention about alchemy again for a second. You mean the same way that the diamonds were created in Australia? With the giant snake that flew in the air 150 miles and went back into the ground, and they found another diamond mine in the same spot. Yeah, that kind of alchemy. That that well, that's actually, quite I, possible. Uh, that I mean, and the, even the Cherokee called it a giant snake, U- Uktina. So, yeah, it, probably it, the same one power. <laughs> I was uh, I was connected it's with the um, same same currents that we see on the sun arcing up off the sun and then back down yeah. to the sun, right? Well, yes, the prominences. Yes, that's what uh, – Chris is a master of that. So Chris Chris Selle, he's on the call right now, actually. His work there, the the one before we put Sosa, it's odd that we're talking about both of them because I was going to say, well, you know, Sosa's video reconnected me to the idea of alchemy because, you know, the, the night and day, and as you were just saying, uh, Ramon, like the idea that uh, certain things co- come from certain plants uh, or the, the idea of that. Um, whether or not be true or not, but it is, you know, part, it's, it's wrapped up in the divinity and mysticism or mythology of, of ancient Egypt. Right. And then, of course, we're also talking about these loops, which literally Chris did this wonderful presentation on where we were get to see the, well, it wasn't even a presentation. He was showing his work. It, it's not a, it wasn't a presentation, but he was showing what he was working on, just like Ignacio was. And it was very revealing. It's amazing how many people are behind the scenes working when you don't even see it uh, until someone goes, hey, show me your stuff. <laughs> you know, so, so, so that's why I'm very like, go ahead, Jules, take all the time you need. <laughs> so a uh, good example, if you since you have it up on screen, if you go to page 22, it looks like um, this is the character. You guys are going to love this uh, for Gong. Yeah. So. It actually starts on the previous page, and you can see it's like a it's like a comet coming down. So the oldest ones it looks like a comet, but in, as you go, you get this these uh, two spheres uh, that are different sized, and then they have this pulse of power, and then and in what looks like a a womb, and then as we get further down to the following page, boom, the the Venus of Willendorf there at uh, L two nine seven eight two. Do we have dates for these glyphs? I'm sure if you spend some time looking into the uh, Lu Shutong, you could get more specific because all of these are. So you could you could just take that that uh, script and then go find a sinologist reference text, and and uh, they'd probably have a date. But I don't know if I, I trust the I don't know if I trust the sinologist dating because they they don't believe the Chinese dating and they have compressed it down. Towards our time, and this, this need that. to compress everything to within the last four thousand years, I think is completely wrong. Um, the Chinese. Oh, I would go with the Chinese dating before yeah. I would go yeah. with the white coats. I had, a, so I had a, I had a, I had a debate on this literally yeah. right with my friend. We were on the, we're talking about a, a video and about uh, William Sosa's video there, and and it was right on the Thunderbolts forum. It was a good chat, but it was like, uh, and it eventually, you know, it was of such, it was of such caliber that people wanted to block topic talking about it because it was like getting people in a in a fight uh so to speak but one of the things that was uh the debate was literally this topic of uh is the uh, or were the um ancients remotely able to even have this now the baghdad battery notwithstanding was there anything else that would sort of indicate that people were you know doing this or uh as so, uh, yeah, they had this, um, this discussion with, um, uh, with this gentleman and they were basically a lot of the arguments that we you were just having with regards to the time frames were brought in because they wanted to compress the time frames. Uh, they wanted to, uh, basically conform Egypt's history to the Bible and so forth. Uh, yeah. not that it was yeah. 
I mean, it's not accepted now, but back when these institutions were originally formed, what we're talking yeah. 150 years ago at least or more. So. Right. So with the, as far as Sinology goes, you would have to add, if you, if you trust the Chinese, you'd have to add five to 1,200 years. It's kind of hard to, to know exactly when it would be. You'd have to, to look into Victorian era uh, Sinology where they still used the Neo-Confucian um, uh, dating system. Uh, there are some of these glyphs which are interesting um, surrounding lightning and thunder. For one thing, the one of the oldest ones uh, to, means to shock, but it, the actual meaning of the glyph is earthquake. And oh. another, for another thing, yeah, for another thing, the word da in da can have the meaning connecting to the great man, uh, literally a man with an, with the heaven bar on it. Um, and I've shown that in the previous two papers. Uh, but then also Da is in a, a lightning, uh, strike site has, um, on page 25, if you, if you do see it, it looks like a laser coming down and actually look, the whole thing, the whole formation looks like a sword, but the, the glyph to the left of it, meaning the, the two powers or the one power that's been passed between the two. Um, I assume from father to son, it probably depends on the age of these as to whether they're talking about from Saturn to Jupiter or the battle between Mars and Venus, because the one for separation, both the rune, the, 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 the Welsh rune and the Chinese glyph both seem to indicate position of two, uh, things that were pointing at each other mm -hmm. and then a formation going between, which, uh, Rick is probably on par. It might have been that they saw and the separation, maybe the idea that like the family falling apart. It's hard to know, you know. There's no well, I, not, from a room, from a single room, you can't make huge conclusions. But no, uh, you're, you're, you 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 were very convinced. I, well, the, just seeing the seeing the glyphs themselves, seeing the way that there was a um, a, a development of them, much like the Rongo Rongo script that uh, Robert Schock was talking about, and you can see some of those. Uh, for example, one of those symbols had the uh, had the sh the the long uh, sort of like an ET like looking head to it. If you know what yeah. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. and I've seen that symbol before in some, I, I don't know if it was an Erica, Eric von Danigan video or something talking about ancient Sumeria or something. And it had two eyes, you know, and, and oh, yeah. I keep seeing these symbols that keep, yeah. uh, that keep popping up either as, as symbols themselves or, um, uh, uh, truly, uh, perhaps maybe ancient symbols that have turned, become writing, uh, as opposed to that sort of had a, a meeting that has carried on over time. If you get one of the most, one of the most frightening is the one for monster. It actually is quite horrific to, to look at because it, it has the same, um, I don't know what would you call symbolism we use even for horror, modern horror films, oh. but the head, the head for it is still the Saturn glyph. What, what page but was that? Now on? It, uh, you could probably find, I mean, it's in the other paper, but I mean, if you... Oh, I got, I got, I just got my, my friends, like, can, look at that paper you were just had there, can, so... Control F on Monster, and it'll probably take you right to the, right to the best page for that. Because it, it was mostly from the shang -Di paper, but, um, I have, I haven't removed everything from the shang -Di paper while I was making this one, in case I have to copy and paste anything. Ah. So it ends up being there. Did you, did you find it? Uh, if well, you look wait, at monster, I have a I have a thought about that monster. It might be the mountain of God, um, aka the plasma connection between Mars and Earth. This big, huge monster, right? It could be. Oh, uh, Lingyi is the the word. Let's see, is that it on the screen there? Uh, I have to make you big again. Let me see here. <laughs> okay. With that monster, it would look a lot of lightning bolts like the Tree of Life as well. Well, actually, if it's monster, it's more than likely Venus. No, it, it's, the word is Ling Yi. Uh, let me just see if I can find it in here. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. You guys are going to like the one on page 48. Um, the stuff on page 48 is just uh, ag amazing. Um, the the All of the symbology is there. It's... And it's it's almost like it's in progressive order. It's really fantastic. Oh yeah, so monsters page fifty one, <laughs> and uh, I mean it's it's horrifying. <laughs> so well, let's get to that um, one first. Let's find that forty one. Yeah, what was it? Fifty one. Fifty one. 
and it meant mask. Yeah, page 51. Uh, it meant mask. And it all had to do with looking into the word for spirit. So when you look at the word monster, it has Ling Yi. Yi is mask. And so this frightening mask, this idea of anger. And the the word anger did show up again, both in the uh, Welsh looking at today uh, and the Cherokee and the Chinese. So there there's a repetition of this concept of the sun got angry either disease no this is definitely or, older or power this is definitely older wow uh this is this is sort of like you know you got the, the you got the saturn sun thing you got the uh the uh the column reaching towards it and yeah but these arms these are like reaching to two plants why are they coming off of the torso of the main discharge what's yeah. going on and, there and that's funny you mentioned torso because yeah. chest and heart show up over and over again um where there's a, a repetition of this idea of power coming from the chest. And I think that that's where the concept of the from the Tao Te Ching comes from. And that's in the second paper. Um, the, 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 uh, it, it, it was not just chi. Okay. It wasn't just a, it wasn't just vital force. It was this, this thunderous power that came from within and the repetition of T, uh, in all these cultures, uh, to, for the word for thunder is amazing. And what I learned is the Welsh word for thunder is taran, and it happens to be a fish. And I kid you not, there is a Chinese oracle for uh, Shangdi for for God for D uh, with a with the alpha symbol right over the chest. So you know it could wow. be diffusion. That's crazy. But it, I, what I'm what I'm well, I, I, is I, I just like to I power. just like to add about uh, Neil's comment when. The power increases, you get more arms and fingers and all of that, right? So I see the beginnings of the Jewish menorah there as well. Actually, I what that did not escape me. Yeah, that's that. I I would maintain that that's uh, going to make it even harder for us to to prove all the diffusions because there's going to be a number of cultures that have such similar motifs. Um, there are differences, of course, but that's a number of these of the things. angles of viewing it. That's yeah. The difference is right. Even even one of the words on here for um, I think it was for a thunder clap. The Chinese word the the word for the clap part actually meant bird, as in thunder bird. So originally they meant thunder birds. Just and the bird the glyph is full of lightning and movement. Just just it's a very active uh, dynamic um, glyph. Uh, there are a number of times they have three circles to show power, two circles. And you, uh, four, you could have four inside, you know, and there's like a quadrangle that they've formed. And these are all clearly references. Men with dancing headdresses, too. Right. And, and they're all clearly yeah, Electrical tori, right? The different, uh, worlds that were involved. Um, the, the so interpretation fully backing up the Greek. Yeah. Yeah. Fully backing up the Greek. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, when you, when we, when we all learned Greek in school, it didn't make much sense because it, it, they teach it as a religion, right? And you're thinking, this is the most amoral <laughs> or even immoral religion ever made. Uh, but the, I think the Greek are very practical in their, in their, uh, passing it on. Well, I, I guess in a way, uh, uh, I think what I like most and the reason that we enjoy the, the Greeks the most is that, um, they in a, in a, in a sense arose from the the um, I guess you could say if if Julian Jane's story is true they arose from the confusion of uh, bicameralism or the fear of gods and so forth and into what we consider more us uh, likely because of such things like this where they're like trying to figure out what did this all mean and they're going. Uh, people, people are telling us what it means, but we don't understand yeah. what the heck they're saying because they're 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 sounding a little, let's just say, a little bit more than happy. They're a little, There's, you know. So we have to. Yeah. So they try to figure out the world from there, and then of course, with that, led to this wonderful uh, dynamic uh, introspection and thinking as they tried to make sense of what they were looking at and tried to derive morals or something from this uh, or meaning. And that, and in the, in the attempt, uh, gave us what we would consider, I guess, classical literature. So, yeah. But that's just um, a thought. I mean, I don't know if that's yeah, true, sure, of course, no. but, you know. Uh, I think it's a mix of, of, um, 
our need and then also the need to survive. <laughs> I think that religions played a, a really powerful role at that, at that time. Um, the, uh, when you, when you, uh, go back to it, the page 57 has the one with the, uh, chest solar monster with, uh, the arms coming out and everything. It's just weird how there's a constant repetition of these, uh, solar powers, uh, sometimes eyes, sometimes circles with dots, sometimes crosses. Where is all this from again? Like, where did these characters originate? Uh, the, I assume that they're more than just drawn. I mean, this must be, this must be a language from, or are these glyphs depicted? These, these are, well, these are all Chinese. So the, the, this is a Chinese etymology site that uh, I'm referencing here. Ah. So the character I'm using is the. But the, um, the, the sinologists have collected massive numbers. Now, these ones happen to be bronze seals. So these were actually, we're talking Zhou Dynasty uh, seals, so previous to Confucius. And we know he, we have pretty good dating on him uh, back to the 800s. So we're talking in the era just after the, the Venus uh, event and prior to the Mars event. So, uh, so they were cata- cataloging it in a way, like maybe possibly the Rongo Rongo text. No, well, the Chinese weren't. They were, them, but um, the Sinologists have cat- categorized them this way. And the never before, I think, has there been such an easy. And the Sinologists all know that these kinds of tools exist and they can put them together. But usually, from the lay side, we're all looking at a single glyph, trying to figure out why does the. Uh, why is it a rectangle with a line halfway through? That's because originally it was a hexagram, a hexagon. I'll show you. Let's see. I'll find well, a page for that. just just as an interesting, I don't know if even this is an aside. Does anyone happen to notice that one? I would say three up and three in from the right side. That symbol right there. Uh, I'm sorry, you know what that? I know that symbol. The eye of Ra. Yeah, that's the eye of Ra. Even has a little thing sticking at the top of it, and a little thing going around the corner. This is, uh, I mean, besides maybe be- just prior to perhaps maybe the birth of Venus, as it looks like it might be birthing in uh, the one below it, uh, two below it there, or something uh, down uh, just three in from the right at the bottom. That one sort of has that little flink thing going off to the bottom to the side. Well, that's what happens with the eye of Ra, if I'm not mistaken. So it's yep. not what. Uh, we're just seeing them at slightly different stages. And maybe instead of uh, redoing all the eyes that they've already drawn, they saw this thing get birthed from it and they put that thing on it. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me that they would do they things kept it like, going. well, that's what I mean. Because, because yeah. these are, these are links. Some of them are going to be some people like the, the, the people who wrote this might be more diligent in their depictions going, you know, we're going to watch it over time. Like those little chicken feet things that you were showing us there. They were depicting it over and over again. The only thing I caution is that remember that the sinologists, they're using carbon dating on these Oracle bones and then the bronze seals can't be dated specifically. So the date, the numbers, the category numbers on there may not be sequential. Just so you know, they may be sequential to when they were found. They may be sequential for some other oh, reasons. So of course, be, aware, of course. be aware of that. Thank, we, thank we you for at least that. Uh, yeah, we mean, have to reorder them. Yeah. But on page 43, you have the sun. Uh, you can easily clearly see that originally there was some hexagonal feature to it. And then by the time you get to the following page, uh, you have the Lu Shu Tong scripts. I mean, you have a whole different, like the Lu Shu Tong scripts tell, they're the most flamboyant scripts by far. And they, they always tell a fantastic story. And you have lots of different stages. And you can see that finally the Chinese settled on L25731. But, you know, for the modern person, they see the, the glyph for the sun and they go, well, that's a weird glyph to have for the sun. Whereas the rest of the world's using the circle with the dot. Right. But the Chinese had both. And they had they had it as the hexagon, which I've I've shown you remember that I showed you from even in Kentucky there was the hexagon with the embossed uh, surface, and we know that 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 globe in the center of that hexagon has to be uh, a body in the sky because the way they did it is exactly when you look at like the moon, you see some of the curvature on the outside, but you don't see a hemisphere of it. And that's the same way that the, the rock art in Kentucky is. It shows a part of it, but not all the way hemispherically. 
Right, and there and, could also be I, much more occlusion going on where we're seeing through um, uh, through the sky being uh, more debris or more dust, uh, different color well, that, sun that, and so that, forth. That particular rock art is, uh, I think, goes all the way back to the polar configuration because there is no other indication of destruction on that on that rock art. There's just the hexagon of uh, the Saturnian pole, mm-hmm. and then that that sphere, uh, and it's not too. There's no Venus there. So besides the and obvious the, Superman the, symbol there, by the way, two uh, two in from the lower right there, two in from the lower left, there's a, a very yin yang like thing going on. Yes, yes, and, well, and see, that, I, 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 I'm guessing that Saturn di- and Jupiter didn't, uh, didn't have, uh, did, didn't interact with each other one time and then go out to the outer solar system. I think that as Saturn was coming in, it perturbed their interaction, perturbed Saturn yeah. and it and Ju- and Jupiter maybe two or three times, and this is why we have so many variations on these glyphs yeah neil there scroll were, down just just like i'm actually not me it's matt but matt oh, okay i'll order look him at the word there. for purple <laughs> remember we were looking at the purple sky look at the word for purple there at s at the the bronze seal oh yeah s look at the you have two um you know ovoid spheres right. that are not the same size not the same diameters and you have interaction going on, and then the symbol for God or power. And I found out from this book, this uh, this ancient book. <laughs> oh, wow. No wonder the, the Romans Welsh, wore those. The ancient per- Welsh grammar, uh, the, the, the Welsh sound in the Colbrin mm-hmm. for God is the same, that triple uh, raid glyph. It's pronounced eow. Uh, I A I A U, and it it does mean yeah, preserver, way. creator, and destroyer. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, and okay, Gene. There, that makes uh, a see lot you of later. Sense because uh, we I missed you. You're always welcome. Dr- come by anytime. Okay. Um, I, well, so I was the, just going to say that makes a lot of sense because taking a look at some of the old culture in the Ukraine. They say it's dated to twenty six thousand years. Or may I don't know. We'll, we'll, it, that still remains to be seen. But the Buddhist monks go there and say they they come from the Ukraine, and even the Dalai Lama has been there on a pilgrimage. And if 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 the Chinese and the Irish and and the Scottish and English have similar sounding words for the same sort of of thing. It doesn't. It, it it makes sense to me. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if they have the sounds are the same, but I'll tell you this: the the Kumri, so the Welsh, they don't call themselves Welsh because that means strangers. Um, the Kumri, they they maintain that they come from Crimea, from the Ukraine, from so, the Crimea, yeah, yeah, That's and Ukraine. they're yeah, and, and they're. And I'll tell you, they found in Proto Sumerian texts. The first mention of Buddha, or, or sorry, Vishnu, and Vishnu's staff is represented in the ground. It's Tim and Lee Hooker talking up megalithic mania, and it it's amazing what they've found. Yeah, that's and a great channel. Nobody knows about it, and the, one of the world's foremost scholars in Sumerian texts has been there, translated this stuff on the walls, and he's he's found Enki. Enlil, Anana, Anu, uh, all of the Sumerian, or a lot of, a, a huge pantheon of the Sumerian gods, and Vishnu, the first mention of Vishnu ever. Right. The and oldest the, mention. The, the point of this, uh, John Williams from this Welsh grammar text is the, uh, the creator, preserver, destroyer are the rays. Oh. The three rays of the Alwyn glyph that we're seeing here in this power that are, that are going out. On the bottom. They are the, they're the, well, they're, they're throughout, they're everywhere. I mean, they're just all over, they're all over here in America, they're all over the world. Those three rays, uh, that come out, sometimes they are in a W shape and sometimes they're asymmetrical as we're seeing when it was in, uh, the phase was unstable. Mm-hmm. But that web, uh, that, that trident shape, that, those rays were considered the God, the I am that I am was the sound associated with be 
pronounced. And the closest that we get is the yow, yow, yow. You here in uh, Kentucky, the Cherokee said you, you wahoo, which I'm of course butchering it because I'm not Cherokee. But um, the that power appears to be what's passing. If, if you look at that CLS zero nine six seven four, what's passing between uh, Saturn to Jupiter and then coming down towards Earth. Uh-huh. And uh, that one by is the purple. Way, this, this is the seal for that, purple. I know that's, and it means, <laughs> and that, I mean, so that it was likely whatever this was was of that color, whatever events that was. See, some uh, of the things, possibly. some of the things. Well, it was a whole. It was a royal symbol in in Rome, like purple. Uh, probably not only because it was rare, but it had some other, probably some more deep meaning, but was probably lost to our to our knowledge, of course. I mean. There's... That was kind of why the uh, the military. Well, I, I just put a link up to that talk uh, at uh, for Tim and Lee Hooker make megalithic mania. Yeah, if yeah, anybody yeah, is interested in it. Okay. So, so was that Robert? somebody was saying something? Yeah, Robert. I was just saying that whenever like um, militaries when they do their posturing, they make those same sounds as to mimic the uh, the sounds of the gods, like the like we even saw it in the movie Three Hundred. Whenever they would sit there like, "What's your profession?" and they go, uh, "How?" <laughs> you know. So yeah, that's nice. Like, that's a, I've never made that connection. That's that's a great yeah, connection. That's why the Navy and the Marines they go hot. You like hoo ya or Yahoo or whichever one they want to do, whichever one. Right. Hoo ah. Yeah. I, I right. wanted to point out something that really hit me with that language, guys. Uh, you 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 nailed it because there's something that I have recently become aware of that I didn't think about. Um, when we think about what we say and how we say it, that is something that was not the way it was just a few, maybe even 100 years ago. Our ability to eat more refined foods, baked breads and so forth, have allowed us to have uh, our jaws allowed to develop an overbite, which allows us to pronounce certain words a lot easier. Um, and that was not something that was present in our ancestors so in some ways, the way that we are saying the words, like, for example, the way you were butchering something that was said, uh, is because they, they these languages were developed prior to us developing right. that particular feature. Thus, speaking them is a bit different for us. You can notice Page, that uh, in certain types of languages, which are more gutter, guttural because of that, that feature. I mean, the same thing is done electrical in electrical uh, change Africa. in our genetics, yeah. Well, it's it's just a development of food, really. But still, I mean, hey, once we started baking bread, we were like, screw this eating nut crap, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> you know. so I, I, I feel like I found also some evidence for the plasma sheathing. So, like, on page 41, um, you see some of the different stages in one character for heaven. So this, this is the character for heaven that's from the I Ching, from the one of the oldest books in the whole world, and the Lu Shutong show very different um, versions of this same the same glyph, and um, it, to me that's that one disturbing. on the right, the one on the far right shows some of the best evidence for, for them actually seeing some some type of sheathing going on some something encapsulating the formations yes I know. and I've, yes. I've seen that in different i've seen that in different glyphs too i can't name every one of them but uh this one i thought was interesting because you you have one of the glyphs has the three powers and they're all suns and then you have another one and the powers are coming out of the sun and then there's lightning going towards the sun well, i think and then he's i think the, that, the that might be recognizing <laughs> that might be recognizing that there is three in one in that glyph like if if it is the configuration, of course. But yeah, well, maybe maybe they looked at um, Jupiter. Maybe this this one came from the time of Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, and that that battle. I, I guess for for Daddy's love as to who's going to be the dominant uh, god in the sky there. But then they maybe they saw them as one one particular uh, power. I, oh, I don't know. They, you, they saw have, they, you mean you're you're trying to tell me that. They saw them as some sort of holy trinity, like three to one. I don't know <laughs> where they get idea. that idea. I know that's crazy, nuts. crazy idea. I, I don't, but, I don't uh, know any religion that passes down that kind of nonsense. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. 
But <laughs> anyway. It is interesting to see, though, that, that within the same... I mean, this is heaven, right? So this is not the Tian word for heaven, which is the great man glyph with the uh, the line across the neck, etc. This is, this is the one... That's Atlas, that, by the way, in a way. You know, so we're... That makes huh? sense that he's holding yeah. up a particular heaven as another world, as it were. And 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 yet here we are also seeing a strife between them. And so you know the uh, the word chin sounds very similar to the word for thunder, which is jin. Um, and thunder, the thunder god is at the basis of spirit and and d. The basis is shen, the the lightning god. And uh, Shen has itself also the reference to the separation. It has the reference to what appears to me to be Mars versus Venus. So again, different times these were these these oracles and glyphs were forming at different times, but they're sh- they're sharing this very similar cat- catastrophic story. And of course, the Sinology uh, Sinology community doesn't mention it at all. Well, of course not. But I, this this is the same. See, this is touching on something that's very important. We were talking about this. The internet is a beautiful thing. That's all I can say. So when I'm looking at this, when I'm starting where I'm sitting, where I'm looking at Velikovsky and then I'm looking at plasma cosmology and I'm seeing the merger and the development and the electric universe blooming and all that wonderful stuff, the progression of just the last, I don't know, 15 years is astounding because we're sitting here, not only we're going, okay, geology, boom. We're looking at, you know, we're getting a grip on what we're looking at, and then we're like, hey, well, now we need to do experiments. We know where we go, th- go with that. That needs some money. Okay, archaeology. Okay, we're starting to look at that. And now we're taking it into etymology and, or, or uh, what would you call it? Sinology? The uh, symbol uh, depiction uh, and trying to understand the yeah. origin of those. So, but I mean, that's a ch- study of the Chinese, that's Chinese studies, sinology. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, of course, that should make, duh. You know, anyway. So. The uh, but still the uh, even English uh, no one can now just sitting here as a casual observer not look at certain letters a different way like there's A obviously there's O okay and T I mean so now we're looking at uh, the idea that some of these could be the birth of uh, symbols like R and so forth and. Uh, I mean, not that they don't have depictions, but where did those come from? Where did these uh, the Etruscan uh, and and Latin of Rome? Where did that where did that originate? To get my name, so. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think it, we're getting to the point where we're getting enough knowledge. I don't know that we'll necessarily be able to say how, what Rongo Rongo sounded like, but <laughs> of course. we're going to be able to decipher what it actually is saying at, at, at some point within the next few decades, because we're going to have the same word as the same symbol in another, it will still be this kind of um, just like all these, they, they are contextual words. Some of them have dozens of, of multiple meanings. And then as I pointed out, sometimes, they don't seem to be related at all. You've got a, a word, one of the words, uh, that, that gong that ended up in the Venus of Willendorf, um, it was actually the word meant open or uh, public. And guess what? That That is one of the names of one of the runes in the Colburn system. Is So they have names for the runes. Huh. And at least about eight of them I've identified are similar as to what have been coming up over and over again when talking about thunderstorm, spirit, Tao, energy, this kind of thing. And um, this is what my concern them, is. What, one of them is open. Of course, of course, it would be because there must be a sky opening. There, there's there was talk about Ooh. above the sky there was a, a lens um, that would open and shut. Uh, at certain points, and that was sort of like a capacitance build up above the magnetic donut hole of the Earth that would sort of open and close or disappear and appear, sort of like or, a, a, or maybe it maybe it means opening of the uh, chassis, or maybe it means opening up of the chest. I mean, we we don't really know exactly what is opening. It's just that it, something is opening, and out of it came power. Now there is that in that new leak project video. Um, they gloss over it because they they didn't know what was going on. They're they're really having a good time, right? Like it's a it's a fun channel. They have like three hundred thousand subscribers, but they're just totally <laughs> guessing. They're totally guessing. That's what so they're sad seeing. in a way. 
you know, it is. You, you, did you sad. not did you write this for them for, in a way? Uh, in a way, I mean, and I put I put comments on those kinds of videos, but but anyways, they gloss over one of them. It shows very specifically Saturn giving birth to Venus, which again, we how do you have know it's Saturn? Birth. And I'm very interested in this clip. I I am. I'm just saying. I it's coming from the Nahuatl of uh, the the Aztec. There's a lot Mayan. of talk about Jupiter oh, doing it. Is what I mean. Fire. So. Well, I'm just telling you what the Mayans say. The, the no, actual cool. translation of the Nahuatl is there, there's a story of Quetzalcoatl, and then he gives he gives birth, and then it becomes the the morning star. So the the, oh, uh, wow, the tone the tone changes from a personalized uh, anthropological story to the birth of the of the evening star, and and that that translation well, pretty, uh, it's I pretty can, clear. I, I didn't read it, but yeah, it's pretty clear. So when we look at this news, it's like newspaper rock, but I don't know if that they were at newspaper rock because they didn't say, but it, it's showing uh, a round object with legs spread wide and out of the bottom of it is coming very obviously a, a planet. <laughs> There's no mistaking it. That that leak project video is pretty, it's one of their newer ones. So it is wouldn't it be hard. sort of like a sheet in the gig type situation? Uh, you're going to have to, I don't know what you mean. Uh, sheen in the gig. No, I mean, like, what are you asking? Oh, uh, well, you know how the, the Sheena gig is shaped, uh, if you're aware of the uh, Sheena, uh, two E's. It's like Sheena, na, space, na, yeah, space, gig. There you go. There. And they just hit images. There should be, uh, Sheila? No, I guess it was she. It's not Sheena, Sheila. Oh, well. There you go. That one. Let me see here. Uh, sort of, but it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more, uh, like there's a, there's an object coming out of the body. It's not just an opening. Uh, well, this is just the, this is, yeah, th uh, that's, that's I mean, the early I'm trying stage. to, yeah, these are, uh, these are mostly from a pe period of time. Uh, they're, they're noticed in Irish churches and they were up in the corner. Uh, they were basically take, they were, all these were from temples that were destroyed and that churches right. were erected in their place, obviously. But on the outside, where the priests would never go and never walk around the church ever, uh, there would be one of these high high up near the near, near the roof, if you know what I mean. Like so, that was yeah. their way of going. Screw you, if you know what I mean. So, and that's why uh, they became sort of famous. Uh, what, what what were you saying there, Jim? What's uh, nice circles on the arms, Sigmund figure? Oh, uh, well, if you look at the classic. Um, picture of the stick man with the, the nice circles under the arms. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm actually wearing it, that shirt right now. Yeah, the, the, the most important thing is to imagine where you, what perspective you have if you see, to see that you have to be in the plane of that, that Taurus around, you have to be seeing that Taurus edge on. And at the time you're seeing that, you have to even be outside of the whole Taurus, right? Well, I, I, I figured, and this could just be my, you know, figuring, that the, uh, the times when it would be most visible, it would also be leaning uh, towards the night, uh, which would be, of course, when we, it would be dark to us. So the normal angle that you would assume coming, if it was coming straight out of the pole, would be erroneous. If we were associated even with coming straight out of the top of the planet in relationship to the sun, okay, that would probably even be erroneous because it would be pushed by the solar wind sort of on an angle towards the night side, which would make it something that wasn't seen well, it would be leaning away from it during the day, but during night it would sort of rise, if you know what I mean, attached to the Earth. But I don't know, <laughs> so because I don't, uh, I I wasn't there. So uh, well, it, it just it just seems like to me that to get that depiction where you're seeing nice circular cross sections of this plasma torus, you would have to be in the plane of that Taurus, which means though inherently this and that this is the part that bugs me is 
that's not a discharge between you and anything else. This is a discharge across the sky where if anything you're in the to- you're in the torus of this thing or or outside the torus of this thing but you well, I, I agree. Not. If you were, you would be totally right. If it was edge on, I totally agree with you. However, there are also some sort of depictions of this particular, um, uh, we'll call it squatter man for now. But you can see that some of the, um, some of the Taurus has a teardrop shape to it. If you notice, did you notice those, some of those? Like, I figured it was trying to depict that it wasn't perfectly, uh, that the circle wasn't perfect, that it was, it was on an angle or something. Right, that we were that was, either a, right, yeah, above that, or below that plane. Yeah, that's, but, but, that, but I don't, I get, again, it, uh, once it gets stylized, you know what happens. And Ramon, that looks amazing. That's like an evil sheet in the gig of death, right there. <laughs> Look at this thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't get much more explicit than that. I think that that is probably the best um, of that stage that I've ever seen, uh, because most of the time you just you just have text. Hey, hey did you guys go full screen with that, please? Oh, he, he can try. Yeah, thank, yeah. Thank. Uh, I believe this is in Utah, but I'm not 100 percent sure because I. I I wasn't there, so I don't know. Um, but it is very similar in style to the newspaper rock. So um, wow. I do not. It is not newspaper rock. I'm very sure of that it's a totally different shape, but it does appear to be the same uh, or similar tribe. You know, similar culture. You know, like a uh, maybe a pueblo esque culture or something like that. Uh, but I, I don't know for sure to be to be honest with you. Uh, and it's just one of those that I'm going to want to have to to go and visit. But uh, it, it doesn't get much more explicit than that. I still got to see Newspaper Rock. Yeah, it, that one, uh, Newspaper Rock, is almost too busy. It's got, it's got right. so much evidence that most people, when they look at it, they has, their mind dismisses it because they can't fathom all of the weirdness that's going on. It, it, is, it is probably the, the uh, top of... Whoa. Uh, what do you call what do you call the that an orgy of evidence? That's what you call that. <laughs> right. You really need to go to SaturnianCosmology.org and look at some of John Cook's work and the. I guess he has a uh, he has a, 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 a chronology. I don't know if it's .dot org or .dot com or something like that, but it starts with a K uh, for Chronos. But that that is, uh, you know, is basically he's trying to decipher these times. Uh, with the late John Cook, and, uh, and obviously this is built on the backs of Talbot and Velikovsky and on all of that, which basically says, "Hey, our our ancestors were not, you know, silly. You know, they're trying to tell you something. They're trying to this impressed upon them so much that they pecked ro- stuff out of rocks. You know, like I have uh, in the plasma glyph paper, you I that devoted up? basically part one to proving." That, uh, natives were not, um, silly. That they, that they were, of course, quite scientific. And I have an entire table just devoted to the illogical things that we say about, about natives, um, in order to, uh, kind of, in, as far as anthropology goes, in order to kind of dismiss looking at it any, any closer. And like I've said before, you can go to Cahokia, uh, today and you're gonna see them depict them in loincloths, which makes zero sense in any, any plains tribe you ever look at, they are dressed fantastically and flamboyantly. Oh, don't they, they wear like pants and with and the stuff? Sim- all this, yeah, with all the symbols. But yeah, with no, like at the, at the decoration. At the Cahokia, symbol. you literally, you literally have, they have the, the women are topless and the men are, uh, they're all in loincloths. And I wonder if uh, that was like some sort of that's nonsense. African, that's not an uh, esque way of National Geographic. Uh, primitivizing them or something. It's really well. It's just the way that modern archaeology is done, and and, and you, there is a great description of the Cahokians. Uh, I mean, it's it's probably biased as well, but it's from the Chinese. So if people want to buy the book to the gates of Feng Tu, uh, the Chinese went. They came. They saw. They conquered. Uh, literally, they spread smallpox while they were there. They felt bad about it and drew some dragons on a rock and then left. And the Cherokee agree. They came, they visited, they left. Uh, the description 
uh, from the Cherokee's perspective of the Cahokians is that they were a priestly cl- class of people who were obsessed, uh, quote, obsessed with uh, exorcisms, basically. And that that's the description of the Chinese. They have a huge religion uh, devoted to uh, the exercising of bad uh, behaviors and, like, even the smallest sin the Cahokians were all about exercising. It was a city devoted Actually, to that. Actually, that totally makes sense because that's very true. Well, because they were worried that the sun would get angry at the sins and then again destroy mankind. That's oh that's, yeah, which is basically that's the, the Cherokee said exactly the same uh, depiction from the Hebrew, more or less. You know the uh, the book to the gates of Fung Tu is one of its kind because it's the only translation uh, into English uh, of that. If people want to start with a simpler uh, background story, read uh, Chasing Dragons uh, or Chasing the Piazza, um, which is all about that the, the, the Nicholases and their journey to discover. And the Chinese have been very supportive uh, over there because they were super excited that they got here before Columbus. Um, but people got here before them, too. So, you know, uh, the, the Cahokians, though, they were... Uh, interested in this sun worship and, and interesting their cousins down in, in Alabama and Moundville, they even their sacred symbol was the left hand with the with the uh, sun spiral in the center. So they were really concerned about the, the movement of Venus. And of course we've talked about this the thirty some odd serpent mounds throughout uh, North America and then also there's plenty of them over in the British Isles too. They were interested in the migration of Venus. Um, the, the, uh, which tribe was it? Um, gosh, there was a, tri- the Pawnee, the Pawnee Skiddy were sacrificing people up till 1905 to Venus. Right. So they, they were sophisticated and they had, they had their reasons. They, they, they had a science to it. It wasn't that they couldn't have the wheel. They knew about the wheel in the sky. It was that the wheel was sacred. So they, they made these mounds with baskets of earth. That's what the Cherokee have even written in their mess. Roman, uh, yep. I would submit that they were afraid of Venus because it crossed Earth's path for 750 years. In the- <laughs> yeah, I'd say they were. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they were. Uh, they, yeah, I think they were afraid of it for good reason. But anyway, uh, either way, uh, uh, Jim, this is why I wanted you to uh, to you to be definitely on with Julian because one of the things that I've I've seen is as much as I agree that there has to be longer cycles and then this gives me the idea that there has to be something related to um, like the 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 idea that that uh, mankind has been on earth much much longer than we give any credit for this this uh, this 6,000 years idea or biblical thing or whatever or trying to say that civilization is only this this long is is um, almost preposterous in the face of it, especially when we were looking at that Mario build rep stuff, especially stuff that that you're talking about with regards to very long and ancient uh, drawn cycles. It, there could be a possibility that things have been long and relatively balanced, or, or at least relatively peaceful, uh, sky calamity wise, for a long, long time. That the that we saw uh, the Saturnian conjunction come through the system as the Venus figurine depiction. So, and very rarely does it cause us hell. It came and went, and then eventually, sort of everything went to heck, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we were, we're now sort of like, uh, we became incredibly scared of the, of the sky and we are, we're giving, you know, species wide psychic scarring as it were. Um, and of course that led us to no longer have a lot of the, uh, perhaps, uh, and this of course is obviously some bit of fanciful thinking, but the, the sort of, uh, idea of world harmony of the quote-unquote golden age uh you know eternal light you know or, or saturn or even before that when things were just not devastating <laughs> you know like where where you could be existed for like civilization exists for a long period of time before it was completely wiped out 
uh, and that, and that's where history began to be recorded again. And it was became a sort of a creation myth. And there's nothing before that, that kind of idea. Yeah. Or perhaps we were fundamentally changed. The Bible did say that there were giants on the land before humans. So maybe we were giant humans and slightly changed because of the difference in energies and had to get smaller and, and adapt to, uh, to it. Uh, that's a speculation on my part, but sorry. Actually, sorry for all the, of this no, layman no, talk. You're not actually wrong. I've, I've often talked about that exact thing um, only because... I mean, if there was mega creatures running around, uh, then and it affected all mankind, and this was or all all of the creatures on the earth, more or less, and it existed between, you know, eleven thousand and fifteen thousand years ago, or however long they say. Well, then, human beings were on the earth at that time. No one debates that. So, why wouldn't some of them be just as the others were? If you know what I mean, like I'm not, I mean, I'm saying that if something changed the electrical environment of the planet to such an extent, it should affect us too. That's all. Uh, it doesn't mean well, that yeah, it, it stayed saying, that way, and it doesn't mean that what everyone I'm was. Is maybe the dinosaurs <laughs> so, only killed off twenty thousand years ago, or twenty or thirty thousand years ago, almost killed off. In, when and the energy you're totally changed. right uh, in that and, too. And, <laughs> well. Here's an idea. So I was. I, I mean, I mean that we don't know. I mean, you're right at that we don't know. We now have right, to question know. all that again because the dating method is now completely speculative. How can we possibly yes. agree that uh, if electricity affects decay rates, how are we supposed to say that this was actually as far back in time as it was? I mean, our well, um, the, ability to prove that is limited, I guess. Right. It's limited to what the cultures like the Egyptians who actually put it into stone. But here's another thought. How old are those stones now? See? And it's it's also limited to the amount of electrical energy being deposited in a certain area on the planet. We have to figure out where these bolts came down and then be able to extrapolate, you know, how much of a a change of carbon these things cause. The nice thing is, the nice thing about the Egyptians is they put some star, uh, so we can use star maps uh, to do some of it. But you know, like like the the uh, motif of having children ride on dragons, there is a common motif of amnesia in our species. We have oh, whole movies great. or science fiction movies like The Dark City um, yep. and, and anime shows like The Big O, where amnesia of before the recent term. If you really think about it. You know, since we started the scientific period, and the, we had the scientific, we had the industrial revolution, the Great Enlightenment, plus we had, of course, all the reformists and revivalists. Right. All of that sort of swept under uh, just the last period. So now go back two periods before that. The way of thinking, the the mode of thinking, what what people would say, how they would greet. Um, you know, the, the concept of gods, uh, all of it would be very, very, uh, different in my opinion. Psychologically, I mean, that the, 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 the cultural framework would have a, a, a force field like effect. Okay. And so we're, now we're trying to experience these motifs, like I, like I showed in the, um, in the Ferris wheels paper, right? Or if anybody who you know follows Star Wars or any of the modern myth making, right. we're trying to experience them, but we can't seem to experience them in that same old way. It's really hard to to even talk about. Hey, King no Arthur problem, Phil. Days. You know, take care, my friend. To, I'll hard catch you later, and I'll um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Definitely, love you, Adios. my friend. See you later. Uh, it's, it's take hard. care, Phil. See you later. Even... Take care. We, we can't even do the Trojan story without uh, interjecting a lot of modern filter onto it and how they speak and everything. Everybody loved that show Deadwood because it was supposedly much better, you know, how, how Western, uh, how people in the Old West were talking. But if you look into how people in the Old West talked, it wasn't that excessive. We, we have a hard time calibrating to the past, you know, and, and I don't even well, know that's that, true. We, we, we that mock the old, we mock the Old West, but then... Uh, we know Is that, why that we always talk the old English using Shakespearean. Well, no, no, but, but but look at this old West thing that we mock 
because they were speaking uh, colloquial or in this. Yeah, sure, okay. Yes. Don't get me wrong. But same with up where I'm from. There's there's certain things that are still colloquial up here. But at the end of the day, the statement of uh, of 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 I mean, this was I mean. These are some of the greatest orators of all time. I mean, look at your American Revolution. Do you, do you read some of the stuff they wrote? Trust me, these guys oh, were yeah. idiots. Is what I mean. I mean, I'm sure they what? weren't going. They weren't idiots. I said. Not. Oh, they weren't. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't. Fine uh, words. <laughs> no, 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 no. But the, I mean, come on. We. I mean, these these are these are these are articulate individuals. I mean, just uh, exactly. picking up a picking up a school book. Uh, you know, and I learned that, you know, like one of these school books were written for grade six and it was teaching the classics of Greece, you know, and if in high school you'd learn it in Latin or in Greek itself, you know, like that was just how they learned. And it was, so these, you know, these were smart folk. Same issue <laughs> of, of people saying, um, in, in China, for example, they say, uh, you'll, you'll hear them when they're talking modern Chinese say jigga all the time, jigga, jigga. That's um. And we have, we have a worldwide, I don't know if it happened in the past. I do know that people, it, the way that they wrote seems to be a lot more articulate. But my point is that the way that they were thinking is, is the more difficult thing we're having trouble calibrating to even 200, 300 years ago. Well, that is uh, true. In reality, trying to think like a dark age person, there's a, there's a linguistic channel, and I can't remember the name of it, in which he tries to show you how, like, for example, this Khan's name would have been said. It is not easy for him to to go through and figure out uh, by following the trains of the languages gone back uh, exactly because you can't just use modern Mongolian and and the the terms now what we're proposing is that the terms meant something different originally meant thunder birds it was the birds up in the sky you know so ah, okay. there there's there's a change of what they're asking when they say that word when they said thunder. You know, all of us, we're thinking speed of uh, sound limitations. See you later, my friend. Or we'll leave it. Here. We're missing what's his name? Will. Um, Mark. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm signing off, guys. Hopefully, Julian can join soon. I'll I'll uh, participate. You know. Have a, have a, oh, no, have definitely. I'll keep you posted, have a good night. man. Yeah, this is phenomenal discussion, though. Oh, you're fascinating. Thank I'm glad that you're here. Beyond the pale. Fascinating. <laughs> this has actually been quite a quite a great conversation. I'm very okay. You guys can, you have, guys a carry on. have a good one. Have a good night. Bye bye. It uh, it appears to me that the word thunder actually meant something very different. That it did not mean to them the sound of thunder, but it actually meant the god. It meant that the t t h sound because the t rune is those three. Um, the t rune is the three. Uh, I'm sorry, no, it is the, the man glyph. So it is the, the line and then a, another line coming off of it. But the TH, it has the man symbol and another, and then another one coming off of it forming that asymmetrical turkey glyph. And that, so that TH sound, and again, many of these cultures were using T's for the word for thunder. And they're obviously not all linguistically connected. So why is that happening? It appears that when they were hearing thunder, it wasn't just onomatopoeia. It was a conceptual uh, agreement uh, across these different cultures, which is going to make proving diffusion as theory very, very difficult in general. Well, actually, you know what it could mean? It could mean that when we all translate it to thunder, when it all meant, when in actuality, it meant sky noise or something. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it because what else is sky noise that we know of? But if it was well, coming from a, an object in the sky, like uh, the flares coming off of a, an object that was electrically right, connected to our our bodies, our we wouldn't actually be hearing but Neil, that's anything. That's just not what the Chinese. That's just not what the Chinese. The, the Chinese. Oh, I'm just going with what I literally thought you were meant saying. earthquake. It oh, it literally did? meant earthquake. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, it meant. Listen to what I was about to say then, because you might enjoy okay, what I was ahead. about to say. So yeah. these flare-ups that were occurring, we, they would be resonating off of our, our the cavity, the plasma sheath of the Earth, and it would be causing the rocks around us. We would hear them would be the piezoelectric of the rocks would be making noise is what we would hear. So there would be slight 
rumblings basically like, every time that happened. So quite maybe, possible. Um, I, I, like I said, it, it's I've talked about before about this because uh, there's some uh, stories about when, like for example, during the Tunguska blast uh, when it was coming down, uh, when it came in, apparently people were hearing uh, as it was flaring in the sky, they were hearing it flare basically and the, it, but it was instant it was an instant here it wasn't i mean this would have been happening technically in space there was no way they could have actually heard anything so uh this is why i mean that the, there is a connection to the way that it can affect the uh the earth itself with because every single rock that we have i mean not every single one but a high majority of the ones would be uh, piezoelectric in some to some capacity, therefore would move or vibrate when exposed to an electrical field change. So, yeah, no, I I I do I I agree with that. Um, I I don't have any disagreement with that. What I'm trying to elicit is that that they were interacting with it mentally, maybe on a totally different wavelength of of how they actually visualize that. You know, for us when we talk about God I think you might spirits, be right too. You have that. to, you have to, like, if you go to any kind of, whether you're in a church or you're in a school, we all have this uh, need to qualify our man. beliefs. Have a good one. Like, by saying, I don't mean to be superstitious, superstitious. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't this or that. We always have these qualifiers. But when you look at the the past, they were blending the concepts together as if it was everyday normal uh, discussion. Because uh, when I was looking in, unlike God, Feng Shui, in a way where they were just right. basically taking it in stride. Yeah, when I was looking at at uh, spirit and Tao and energy and lightning, trying to connect electromagnetism to Tao, right? Mm -hmm. What I discovered is when they talk about spirits and they get to ghosts, the the char the very character for ghost even goes back to the Saturn myth. That so, which of course, me. all of us are starting thinking about plasmoids, but they sure. wouldn't have thought of it in terms of plasmoids, right? For them, the spirit world would have been as literal as the bathrooms in the mall. They would have been just a fact of life. Well, of and course, now, because if you, for us to, especially well, if Ju if if Julian if Julian Jane's idea is true with regards right. to the bicameralism, then then these any sort of phenomenon, like basically the reason that. <laughs> Lot did what, or, or what Lot did uh, uh, at Sodom and Gomorrah, or whatever, at, with the two angels, because literally they were seeing them, and 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 even though they were events right. of light to them, they were talking to them as if they were right there, because these people were. I mean, this is some. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're in a situation where your mind is having to deal with some pretty f crazy ass shit. <laughs> it's just, right? It's quite yeah, and, and these yeah. plasma images in the in the heavens were kind of ghostly. They didn't have a actually. Salt, they were like, godly like, like to the point where they form, actually you know? listened to them and whatever they say they did. And it seems uh, it's it's, yes, it's it's a very that's strange. Exa situation. That's exactly what the the paper that I was responding to for the second paper. Uh, the original by Yong Sung Bak was uh, uh, who responds to the Shang diviners. And the, the, the trouble they're having in Sinology is that you have a whole camp that says that they were, you know, talking to spirits and ghosts, which of course aren't real. And then, then the, the other camp is saying that they were talking to Shang Di, which of course is also not real. So the Sinologists are arguing between which version of the non-real stuff are these silly backwards primitives talking to. And my point is that we can solve that problem, and I did in the paper. I, I showed that the hierarchy issue of Shang Di is all of those spirits, and they all answer to him, but there doesn't appear to be a hierarchy. Is is very clearly Saturn, the El and the Elohim, and this this uh, oh, it's yes. all one phase of energy going back and forth. And they, the, well, the, but you understand the in Julian Jane's idea, although he would attest that this is what the people there agree. Like, he would not disagree with you that those people believe that, but his interpretation was that because he was using some no, uh, some books, for his example, uh, he was using the Iliad, and in, in, in many situations, people confer with different gods, and they give conflicting answers. Uh, like, one says, no, you should go uh, kill these people and rape her, and another one was like, no, no, you have to protect this person. Um and they, they, they were completely opposing goals. 
And this might have led to the idea that the gods were capricious, that they didn't care because they played games with us. Uh, I think that might lend to that idea, but I don't know for sure. Of course, we're, we're inferring from a guy who died in the nineties of writing a book that had nothing to do with what we're really talking about. Uh, but except for, of course, on the, um, you know, the psychological side, but, uh, to actually say that, no, 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 these were real things that people were listening to is, uh, he, it was when it's in his, his realm. He considered this a survival mechanism where like one survives by being in shock. You were in shock and you survive your event because you don't, you're just at base instinct mode type of idea. Right. And, uh, the idea that we had a, a consciousness assert itself over top of that, that allowed us to have these interesting thoughts and to imagine ourselves in different places and different times and so forth allowed us to, that was, that allowed, we could only do that when things calm down. So it could be that it was before and it turned into something again. So. Yeah, on the subject of L, I would like to just state that I have L twice in my full name, so I must be doubly godlike. <laughs> it's possible you will know. You will again in the in the Welsh runes. The L rune is repeated twice for the Lord, as in Most High One. So there's a repetition of the idea. Uh, the Uchel. Uh, yeah, Uch Elohim is a repetition of yeah, yeah. L. But so it, that's, uh, and then what are, where do people we... think that it's multiple gods? Maybe it's just a repetition. Maybe, thing, a but then we thing. see in the Chinese glyphs there sometimes were actually two spheres, and they were passing some kind of energy between each other and to the ground. And then there was Saturn and sometimes, Jupiter. Yeah, yeah. So some and so it, it's almost like the power that was being passed. Uh, from heaven to to the Father to the Son to the Earth to cause the destructions and and everything that it was the the I am the the Eow right the rays remember the rays were the the uh, the concept of the Bardic tradition as to what they're actually worshiping not the sphere itself right and now that I'm might have waiting. been that that might have been the source of the issue between Moses and uh, Joshua. Is that, you know, Joshua was obviously not raised in the Egyptian households. And here, Moses probably had access to the text. He could probably tell the difference between what was the original religion and what wasn't. Right. And I'm just waiting for Neil to That's do the EL electrical simulation sound. <laughs> oh, well, I, I like the Yahweh one myself. It's my favorite. But, Cause it was like <laughs> Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. I could picture that. I could picture that in my head as easy, especially when he said, when Moses said that whole, like, I, I heard the name between the thorns type of thing. I thought that was very compelling. Uh, but the name of God between the thorns, I mean. Uh, I, I definitely recommend, well, could it, and it's, could it be as simple as L, 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 L? Actually, it could. I don't. It could. I said it says in this preface, the the this this old Welsh text of the English uh, the ancient Welsh grammar. It says the bards say it was a harmony that could not be rep uh, repeated by mortals. That it was uh, too it was too difficult for us to actually repeat, and that that kind of jives with the rest of the world's traditions as well. That's it that's was, very interesting. We actually hear. Uh... Uh, because the Earth would naturally be a little bit of a transducer, uh, like we just talked about there, uh, we only heard, we only really, in reality, heard the flare-up of, uh, and only by witness testimony, of certain uh, piezoelectric effects when asteroids or meteors are entering the Earth. However, in no time have any human beings on the planet now heard a planet connecting to us. Like to for our planet to be connected to another planet, and yeah, the, massive amounts of energy instead of a small amount. Yeah. Well, also in the way that it would come in rhythms and layers, and it would have a a, a series of uh, of shells. Each one would be interacting and harmonious with the others. It's quite possible that there was a sort of holy melody or divine sounds which started. Because uh, if you listen to the sounds of the Bible says trumpets. Well, there you go. But at the beginning, when the Earth connected uh, to the uh, to uh, or in the creation myth stories, uh, not the actual ones, because in, in a way, this is actually interesting. In a way, alchemy and the shamanism and the paganism of really old practices uh, 
might actually predate the newfound uh, idea that there was a creation and we started there in the the Middle East Hebrew th- type stuff. And then that was eventually uh, reset again by modern religion a couple thousand years ago. So these resets of intellectual um, trimming, we'll call it, or carving off parts of your mind so you no longer think about that, uh, it, it's, it's kind of... Um, it kind of explains a lot because these these people are trying to reach from the past around people who are trying to tell them that their way is the best, and this probably happened a few more times when I think about it. But um, uh, yeah, so just hearing the sound of Saturn uh, uh, is it's very eerie uh, and it's kind of yes. So I can envision but three that is of them radio. together. It is radio waves, so well, there's no there's no proof that they heard the radio waves. Oh no, I no, mean, no! I didn't mean that, but I mean yeah, yeah with the with the with the harmonies themselves. Just for anyone having, listening. <laughs> well, yes, please go listen. Uh, you can find them on YouTube. But if we took those three or four planets, whatever they were, in a conjunction above our planet, connected to us, we would be in multiple spheres, each one of us resonating within this uh, thing, causing the Earth itself to uh, resonate in the in the cavity. So we would. I mean, to hear it all around you at all times, either at a low point or a high point, depending, would be kind of kind of very interesting. And then, of course, it would be equally horrifying when that broke up and then things came near again. And it sounded like, for example, did 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 when Venus turned into a dragon, did it start screaming at you? <laughs> like, you know, like, like was it going, uh, you know, like, you know, like that would definitely make me run for cover. You know, like if I heard that, you know, yeah, like, well, yeah, maybe it made a whistling sound. Yeah, you know, who knows? That's what I mean. Like, I don't. We we have no idea. Although I I do know that there was depictions of the devast like of the of the sounds of the devastation, uh, depending on where people were. But uh, you know, I don't I don't recall anyone saying, uh, you know, during when that land to the far east was burned alive and thrown into the fires uh, by the by Venus, the goddess of death, uh, we heard harmonies <laughs> or chanting or something. I don't think that was in any depictions, so what does it mean? So. Well, I haven't found any Chinese evidence so far. That doesn't mean it isn't there. I haven't done any etymology on screams or shrieks or anything like that. It, we do seem to have an obsession with it. If you think about our dinosaurs, our horror films, there is a, a a a primal scream. We have the banshee shriek. We have we do have a, a curious um, fascination with shrieking, but that could also be just purely the psychology of how how that sound interacts with a you know maybe we're maybe it goes back to being afraid of lions or eagles or something. I, who knows? Well, that's but, true. We wouldn't but, really know for sure. Uh, it would be interesting. We, what we, I mean, not that anybody wants there to be another Tunguska-sized event that could happen to over a populous uh, area, but we do need something similar-ish in a controlled environment. And how do you create? You can't, you know. So we we just have to wait until we have, and then we capture the evidence uh, of the Tunguska uh, <laughs> with an airburst, uh, the same way that we did with that Russian uh, meteor that came in, right? And and then see if there is any kind of extra subtle. Uh, of course, all the film footage, as far as I've ever seen, for that that Russian meteor was all like dash cams. There's really no good audio for any of the videos I've ever seen. So it, no. it's possible. I know this. NASA thinks that they've solved the the trumpeting in the air. Of course, you've seen that, right? The the trumpeting in the air. The uh, that's been uh, going around the world. Do you know about that? I've heard about humming, not necessarily the There's the trumpeting. I thought that was some sort oh. of viral marketing campaign for the no. a, m- end of the world stuff. Well, no, there's there's like a, a there's a whole there's a whole map that of a guy he keeps track of people who record these on their phones. Oh. And he puts it on to a map, yeah, and it's not just the hum, but uh, actual sounds like like the trumpets of uh, heaven in the air. And there's people going people going what you know that it, it sounds like trumpets and of course people are convinced it's otherworldly uh it's an otherworldly sound but 
there must be a scientific explanation. Even the, the even Velikovsky proposed a way that the Red Sea could have lift, lifted up an actual scientific uh, method. So you know, NASA looked at it and determined that it was that it had to be groans of the Earth, that it was just part of the natural uh, shifting of the Earth, which immediately makes me think of the growing Earth. I don't I don't even know how anybody could think that the Earth isn't growing because I haven't I haven't encountered I can't think of a single thing in the universe that doesn't conform to the growth uh, and existence cycle, you know, where something is born and grows, achieves its peak, and then it declines, and then once it dies and it rots and it's gone for a while and it comes back in some other form, it rearranges. There's a rearrangement uh, to it. And the Chinese talked about this and the Hindus talked about it. And I can't think of anything that does Even the stars, we have a life cycle for the stars in science. So why is it that the USGS is not saying that, I that the Earth is agree with that at all? But well, yes. yeah, you don't have to. Agree. <laughs> don't have to their version of it, but they they say that there's a growth cycle of uh, the stars. So why wouldn't there be a growth cycle for the Earth? Oh. I mean, there's there's very good evidence for the Earth having grown. And how would it grow? Well, energy mass. We're being these Birkeley currents are just constantly feeding energy mass into the Earth. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Wall Thornhill uh, agrees with the growing Earth. Um, Hollow, uh, sometimes, but I, I th- I'd like to think for um, it is it is real. Uh, I mean, there's there's just compounding evidence of um, biomass growing from just the sun itself. Um, that is growing the Earth, and then you have how much tons of uh, Part of how much tons of space debris falling down to the earth every day it's like 300 to I forget but there's tons and tons of it and just those two things you add those together and and, it, and it's growing and you add water to the mix and then and then you get expanding and you know all sorts of different chemical reactions are expanding naturally yeah, I think that it's I think it's growing and expanding, which is why I call it the hygiene theory. Of course, I don't think that it's it's a true hollowness. I think there's just something different in the core than what we've than what they are saying. But uh I think that there's only evidence for growth uh, that the sun is growing everything. It's probably growing things faster than it used to. Um would be my it's, my speculation because the sun's so much more powerful than Saturn was. It, actually, well, I disagree it, with I disagree with most of the uh, ideas that most of the planets are growing. Uh, I'll tell I'll tell you generally why, and it's a very simple reason. It's because we see very few uh, bodies. Uh, if if the geode model is to be the model that we use, or the concretion model, either one, then it stands to reason that. Uh, the amount of expanded concretions or expanded geodes we see that look like balls that have expanded over time would be the amount that we should see in relative to others. Um, And it seems that these are very rare. There's very few that seem to have a crust on it that seem to have cracked open and expanded. Uh, but it, do, it does happen on some geodes, which is strange. So uh, I would say it would it would be an amount of opinion. I've seen the evidence basically for other planets like Mars. We know that Mars doesn't have any expansion going on. Um, but yet I've seen evidence trying to sort of force the Valles Marineris into an expansion crack. And I've seen that happen on other planets too, where equally I see clear evidence of electrical discharge but on earth uh are we being tricked is, is is it is it just carving of the of the oceans is that what happened or is it actually growing you know we see movement there, there's there's a lot there's a lot more going on in the earth on many different fronts that might be one of the reasons why there's life here maybe that's a temporary situation Probably. until we're done cooking i don't know you know. Well, we have a very active magnetosphere, and it's an interactive. It's, true. it's not just repulsive; it's inter and it's interactive. Um, as for the growth, I think it's pretty obvious when you look at not the the Mid Atlantic Rift, but the the Pacific Rift is ex, it's almost accelerating. 
when you when you look at the Pacific Rift, where would all that material be going? You only have a few subduction zones that you can that you can uh, put all that material into, and it's a, and it and it again the aging on those those uh, ocean crust rocks. It appears that the newer stuff has the it's it's like the the faster magma coming out in the newer period. And then the older period, it appears it's like, like the, we are growing faster than. That's slower. what I'm saying. Yeah, right. And and the the question is, is that you know, is that relation to the sun, or is that you know, going back? I don't know. I don't. Maybe have this the has something to do. On that. Well, well, going back to something, um, Jim, your ideas with regards to this, and when I think of you in the cycle, I think of uh, the Mario Build Reps videos and the. The idea is that if the Earth is expanding, perhaps maybe that could point to why we're pointing towards different poles, if you know what I mean. Uh, that would that would be very recent, though. That means expansion happened so recently, and I I don't know. That's that's a challenging thing for me to accept. Well, that's almost like a big topic where you have to get into all the um, put all the ideas like together like this hollow earth idea the pushing gravity idea the um um exploded planet hypothesis you know tom van flander you start getting a picture of that each of those ideas they lend a little bit of support to each other but you can't really pick them pick at them kind of one by one you know what i'm right, saying right yeah yeah I mean, Tom Van Flanderen argued, you know, that the asteroid belt was an, a planet that exploded and it just, but it wasn't from a collision and his whole argument depended on it that current, um, comets and asteroids still so show a signature of, you know, being traces of that original orbit. In other words, there wasn't like a huge transfer of, momentum from somewhere else so in other words it wasn't the collision it had to be just that the planet on its own blew up and threw off all these parts but that goes with the pushing gravity idea one of the big objections of the pushing gravity idea you know before we had isaac newton saying that gravity was or not isaac newton einstein saying that this curved space time idea right newton and others in his day thought of like that there was this pressure Gravity was a pressure, like they had the pushing gravity. Things were shadowed from each other and pushed together by these, like, really smaller scale particles. So was the idea that that arose from Hooke's idea of tension, I think. Yeah, but the, the whole, the whole, the whole issue then. One of the big objections was that if that, if there was some something out there like that, that everything would have to up, and sooner or later planets would explode. But that gives them mechanism then for the very thing that Van Flandert said actually happened. None of that fits with the mainstream model, though, obviously. But the point is, you can't pick you can't really pick pick and choose pieces. You have to go into all those theories and see how they they actually fit, but it's a whole different model than what we what we have now. Yeah. But, but yeah, if, if gravity is a pressure, then, then you can think of things. Things aren't really hollow because they're not, it's not a vacuum inside. There would still be this right. smaller, these small scale particles that we don't see pushing in from the outside would balance. You, you'd almost think of things like bubbles. Mm, yeah. Um, well, I, 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 I mean, some, I, go ahead. I did see some evidence for that, by the way, on a video. If you want to pull it up on YouTube, there is some actual, and it was an accidental. The best part about it is he wasn't trying to prove, you know, these guys are all trying to prove electrogravity, and you end up going, ah, oh, is this shady? This guy was doing something completely different, completely. Uh, he had been paid to do um, one of those experiments on the, so go to YouTube, uh, the channel Warped Perception. He was doing, somebody had paid him to do an experiment on batteries. And what he did, ended up doing is after he would discharge them, because he was doing the bounce experiment, he put them up under an electromagnet and then he turned off the electromagnet and they all were falling. The ones that were, uh, that had the most charge fell faster than the one, him being a layman and a mechanic, 
he was just like, well, they weigh more. And I'm going, well, that's not good according to Newton and Galileo. Uh, Look at that. Can you type it in? There we go. Is it going to magic? Is it working? It's doing its thing. <gasps> this is magic according to the, you know people 100 years ago. <laughs> it's magic according to we're, people we're 50 talking years ago. Yeah, we're, we're talking using... Well, they, they knew about electricity. So oh, okay, okay. Spoiled. In that sense. Spoiler alert. But, I mean, until Ledley, Hedley Lamar did that uh, wonderful uh, uh, time code switching, we wouldn't even be able to have Wi-Fi. Uh, the first one on the left there. Okay. And then what? Uh, yeah, the battery one. And then go to uh, one of the later timestamps here. Until you see the magnet. Okay, all right. Yeah, back it up just slightly. Remember, he's discharged some of these. Okay, so some of them have power and some don't. Right. He's yeah. He's what he's done is he's run them for a long time. So then he puts them on slow mo, and boom, you see, they start differentiating. And uh, so then he runs the experiment again because this is this was for a money shot, right? He was being paid to to get this with the one with the the most charge. You know, it all has to do with the chemicals inside and it being electrolytic, kind of right? It, it, it being spongier, and so it, well, it actually when it hits the bottom. Better. Right. Is that a permanent magnet to the bottom? What's no? It's just a metal slab. Okay. Okay. Which ones are charged and, then, and which ones aren't? The Kirkland uh, and the cells. You can read the. You can read the the um you know, he's written on them. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. But I, I figured then, there's then different does types it, for a different reason. With like four, I think. Let's see. And I, I was like, wow, look at this guy. He's totally not trying to talk about electrokinetics. <laughs> yeah. So what he do, does here is he tries to make it an even better experiment. And it, it was just, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Of course, so I didn't bother writing anything. They should all fall at the same speed. They should all. All at the same speed. Now, has he eliminated for every variable? No, but I I have to say, I, I personally would go out on a limb and and uh, bet a hundred bucks that Walt Thornhill's right. Actually, like he's, he's he's usually been right about everything I've seen. There's and, more to it than even that. And uh, just as a as a as a finishing aside, then uh, since we're going to put the wrap up, uh, one of the things I was thinking about is the idea that. Uh, the experiments of, Gal of Galileo with regards to gravity that he did were not repeated for ever. Um, and recently they did, and they noticed something odd, just like he's noticing, that, for example, certain spheres, different types of spheres, are attracted to different spheres when they fall. Uh, and they, and they, and they, and you know, some will, they do certain odd things that are only noticed after you drop something from a height, <laughs> you know, just like this, when you begin to notice slight differentiation, slight issues with uh, why they're acting, and they notice some twist and so forth. So this uh, idea of falling through a field, and of course this is, just like this, is replicable. We can do it again and again and again, and it seems to be true. Uh, but there's no... I mean, there's no reason why he would notice these things. These are only noticed when someone with high-speed camera technology and lots of free time on their hands goes over footage <laughs> with lots of intricate measurements and laser guides as opposed to Galileo, a tower, and his eyeballs. <laughs>